intrinsic portfolio value is up 19% to 11.1 billion. That obviously includes, you know, any um, fair value um, changes, but also investments during that period of time. So if one looks at it, net asset value per share, it's gone up uh, by 2.1% from 9 rand 34 to 954. Then we also just give you the IFRS net asset value there, which is very close to the other one. During the past year, we've made investments, net investments of 1.6 billion rand. At the end of June, we've had only 61 million rand cash in the ARC fund left, but we've also secured a, a, a facility from R&B of 1 billion rand for the ARC fund, uh, which will also stand as a good step for, for the opportunities that we have to, uh, and that we pursue um, in the next uh, while. If one then looks at the portfolio movement, going from 9.3 billion to the 11.1 billion, that just gives you a, uh, a sense of what what we bought in terms of almost 2 billion, disposals of 335 million, and then fair value gains of, of almost 800 million, but also losses of 650 or so. And that gives us the closing balance of, of the 11.1 billion. And of that, there's, there's quite a, just over a billion of debt in, uh, in that number as well. But th those are the gross numbers. Next one, thank you. That just gives you the additions, the top, uh, top additions of the almost 2 billion. You can see that we spent the most money out of the ARC fund on Alexander Forbes. And then also time band quite quite large. And then it goes on. You can see there number four is like arch emerging markets. That is our contribution in the renewable energy fund and also the cold storage fund um, for, for Africa. And then we've made another small investment into rain as well. So it was already a poor economy and then it was exacerbated by the sudden onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, you know, we could see that, especially our, con our companies where they touch the consumer, you know, it was like you close a tap. There was no money coming in the front door. You know, these companies have got people, they've got premises, they've got other expenses, and uh, they had to really react quite quickly uh, to, uh, to position themselves. We were fortunate enough that some of the businesses, you know, played in, uh, you know, the essential services side, uh, they were uh, maybe platform businesses, uh, other businesses could easily work remotely as well. Um, and, and, and those ones were less affected, but none of the businesses weren't, um, you know, affected at all. Uh, only one of our businesses, maybe one or two others as well. But rain, obviously, as you can imagine, did much better during this time. And then obviously on the cost conscious side, you know, the consumer demanding more value. So we believe that in the businesses like a rain, like a time bank, A2X, which is our rival stock exchange, Line Booker, which is really the Uber of transport, you know, those are the disruptive business models with much lower costs. And we could see a real interest in those type of business during this time as well, because I think consumers are just becoming a little bit more cost conscious during times like we've had up till now.